wanted to share something. When I was practicing for the set last night, just spending time with the Lord, you know, he, he gave me some revelation, you know, to go along with what Pastor Oscar was teaching on, on authority. You know, <laughs> if you want to see it, you have to say it. You know, <laughs> when the disciples were on that boat with Jesus and the storm came, they didn't say it, so they couldn't see it. But then he got up and he said it. Then they saw it. And we have that same authority. When he left, he gave us that and more. And, you know, I have a, there's an older couple in my life that I've, been, I've known my whole entire life. And, you know, they're not my blood grandparents, but I like to call them my spiritual grandparents. And, you know, uh, her name's Linda. You know, cancer has decided to try to take a hold of her. But, you know, I'm tired. I'm tired of losing things to the enemy. <laughs> so I'm ready to see. I'm ready to see it. See that authority in action. And see it come to pass. You know, I'm ready to take it back from the end. So I want to take this this step of faith right now, and we're going to say it. You know, you guys all have something the enemy has stolen from you, so let's take it back. Let's take it back. You know, the devil should be afraid of us. So let's remind him. He's under my feet. 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 He's
tailing it out of here by now. But now let's get ready to see it. Going on. 
but can you do it when you are out of this atmosphere? Can you do it? Can you really do it when you are out of this atmosphere? And when the devil comes to attack you, can you jump in like this? I want to encourage you all. I want to encourage you all this morning. Two things. I got something that the Lord shared with me, but I want to share what I saw as soon as Michael opened his mouth to, I went to the enemy's camp. I saw a vision. I had a vision. Come on. Now this is, this, this is going to be, e it's easy for me to say, but it might be difficult for some of you to believe because you see me as the pastor. But, Pastor is just a title. Your name and my name means something to him. Okay? Your name and my name means something to him. So that means that you have the same authority that a pastor has, an evangelist, a prophet, an apostle. Amen? You have the same authority. We ain't no special. We ain't no different. We're just like you. But if you could use your faith, I said, if you could use your faith. So now let me tell you about my vision. There is something that I have been contending for and praying for and fasting for and just asking the Lord God, you said this. I don't need to remind you, but you said this. You said so and so and you said such and such. And I closed my eyes. And the first thing that I saw was Satan sitting on it. I've never, ever seen things like this. But I saw Satan sitting on a chair holding to that one thing that I have been praying for. And I walked up to him, and I just stretched out my hands and grabbed it. And Satan sat on the ground. And I said, Lord, was it that easy? And immediately the Spirit of God says, because you have been given the authority, and you used it. Church, it was that simple. That simple. It was that I just walked up to him and I took it back. He didn't put up a fight. He didn't do anything. I just took it and I walked off. I didn't hear anything. I didn't see anything. He just stayed there. And it is that simple because you have the authority. But until you believe it, until you believe it, you cannot have it, church. Now I'm going to shift to what the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. I'm speaking to the troubled soul this morning. I am speaking to the troubled soul this morning. And don't tell me, oh, well, I'm okay, Pastor. I'm not troubled. My soul is good. I'm great. I'm here. I'm worshiping. We all, we all go through some things. Amen. Amen. Come on. You got to hear this. Don't walk out. Don't walk out. Don't walk out. Don't check out right now. You got to hear this, church. The troubled soul, even though we go through trials, we got to face those trials with victory, with joy. Okay? Our souls may be troubled right now, but joy comes in the morning, the word says. Great is the reward, the word says. And I love that we were singing this song. It's like, my soul sings, my soul sings. Yeah, because what do we do through these times? All we can do is sing and worship and praise the Lord and thank Him. Amen? So this is the scripture. My fellow believers, when it seems as you are facing nothing but difficulties. Anybody there right now? You don't have to raise your hand. Now, this is a promise from God. This is the word of God for you and for me. So he's obviously speaking to the body this morning. Amen? Amen. See it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. Ha ha, devil. Ha ha, devil. I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. Ha ha, devil. For you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up power within you to endure all things. All things. And then your endurance grows even stronger. It will release perfection to every part of your being until nothing is missing until nothing is missing and nothing is lacking. Your soul may be troubled. You may be going through some things. Your faith is being tested. 
But when you go there, come on, church, when you go there, and down at verse 12, it says, if your faith, if your faith remains, remains, if your faith remains strong, even while surrounded by life's difficulties, even when surrounded by life's difficulties, you will continue to experience the untold blessings of God. True happiness comes as you pass the test of faith and you receive your victorious crown, the promised life of God. Church, God promises everything he has. It's ours. He's given dominion, power, and authority over it. It's that easy. It is that easy for you to step into it and take it by faith and by authority, knowing that it has already been done and he has already given it to you. It was done at the cross. Therefore, we got to go and take it. So again, to the troubled soul, this morning, I encourage you to get up here as we finish this talk. And don't make it that easy for Satan. You got the authority to just take it back and walk back out. Amen. He's 
It's not in it yet. It's still worship here. Oh my goodness. What can you say after that? Jehovah Jireh. Yeah. Yeah. He will provide. Yeah. Man, just, I don't know, I'm going to make this so simple. Jesus, like, it's like, when she said it, like, she took it out of his hand. It's like, yeah. all right, let's just to put in tithes and offerings. Take that financial burden out of his hands right now. That's it. Just take it out right now. Jesus. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Whew. All right. All right, uh, do you mind throwing up my scripture real quick? We'll make this real quick. We just need to, man, I'm, this is going to be some power. It's already been a bunch of power. It's been a powerful oh, service, but it's going to, it's just warming up for this, this sermon coming up. Whoa. Jesus. Okay, it's Ephesians 5.21, and this is about, this is about marriage, but I, I, I want you guys to hear something real quick. I heard this a uh, couple days ago, and I thought it was so good. It's like, when you get married to a person, you like one of the benefits is you can merge your bank accounts. That's like a big benefit, you know, when your money's together. 
When you marry God, Amen. Ooh, who, who's your account owned by? Come on. Come on. You and God. And he lets you actually have a say in it. That's the crazy part. <laughs> so I, I just it just started hitting me. I was like, Lord, like, you... I think sometimes we, we our perspective is once we serve the Lord and we're married, because that's what it is. It's, it's got to get past that metaphor of, like, I'm being married to him. It's not romantic. It's, it's true love. It's this, it's this connection he wants to have directly with you, with the Holy Spirit. But when you have that connection, you allow him to, like, just come into your life in all the different ways. And, and we'll, we'll carry with this in just a second. But it's just like when you're connected in that way, You start to realize if you're merged with his bank account, when you give tithes and offerings, it is unto the Lord. But again, like it's not like we're like you know air mailing this up to heaven, and so like a heaven's going to receive our cash on earth. But it's to do the kingdom work that he's asked us to do on earth. So what you're actually realizing is he's saying, "Hey, listen, you don't have a financial advisor here. I'll help." I want you to do this with your money. He's your financial advisor here. This is beautiful because I think sometimes we look at it as like he's trying to take our money, but he's like, no, I'm trying to show you how to use your money. And when we start to realize when he's in charge of our bank account, he's the one who makes it go up. He's, he's the one who makes it go up. Not us. Not in our great decisions. I mean, yes, we can work tirelessly and sometimes get some productive things, but when we start to obey how he does things, there's a growth that happens. We're going to read this real quick. Um, so, uh, is, it, is that 21? Hey, can you do NLT? I'm so sorry. Real quick. And then this will be really fast. I just want to, just a quick principle, and then we're going to jump into the word. But I want you to think about this covenant relationship. It's this closeness with him. It's this, it's um, like he did this with a few different people. Thank you. Um, with like Abraham and I, or um, you know, like Abraham and Isaac, that's where Jehovah Jireh comes from. It was because he's the provider of that situation. Like God, he, Abraham was willing to sacrifice. He was willing to do it. And then God provided a new way. And that's what he's doing. He's providing ways for us when we put our sacrifice there. When we think, but this is my son, this is my Isaac, this is my everything, God. And he goes, I know. But when you do that, he's not trying to take from him. He's trying to show you what it is to honor him. And when you honor him, there's a growth from that, and there's, there's new things that come in. Real quick, and further, this is about um, submitting to your wives. So look at this. Okay, yes, it's wives and husbands, but look at it as the body of Christ to God. Body of Christ is male and female, correct? Yes, yes okay, good. And further submit to one another out of reverence to Christ. And real quick, um, Sorry, uh, in, in the Amplified Version, I'll just say this real quick. It says, subject. And part of subject is the wife to her husband, not men in general, not as inferior to him, nor in violation of her Christian ethics, but honoring her husband as a protector and the head of the home, respecting the responsibility of the position and his accountability to God. That's the same for us as the body of Christ. When we respect God's position over our life. And we say, hey, you're the protector. Yes. You're the head of the home. Come on. <laughs> you're, you have the responsibility and position of accountability to my whole life. We take the burden off. Real quick, we'll finish here. Be, sub be subject to one another in reverence. And, and, other, and, and also, yeah, I keep like, going back and forth. I'm sorry. But... Um, it, like one of the words for the subject, being subject to him, or in this case submit, it means to submit one's control or yield one's uh, advice. And this is, that's where it kind of came for me. I was like, man, you, you're just looking for us to ask for your advice for things. So real quick, we'll finish up here. Uh, for the wives, this means to submit to your husbands as to the Lord. And for the husband is to the head of his wife as the Christ is to the head of the church. He is the savior of, of his body, the church. As the church submits to Christ, that's us. Like, it's not just about the wives and the husbands. This is us. We're submitting to Christ. So you wives who submit to your husbands, us to the church submitting to God in everything, 
For the husbands, this means love your wives, which he loves us so well. He loves the body of Christ so well, just as Christ loved the church. Yeah, actually, he says right there. He gave up his life for her. And then the next one real quick. To make her holy, clean, holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. I think that was it. But I just want, like, we'll end there. I just want to, like, give you that picture of, like, it's like we're merged with God's bank account. It's, it's, we say, God, this is your bank account. God, this is your, my financial stuff is your stuff. God, yes. you're responsibly my protector. You're responsibly my advisor. The thing is, he's not, we're not forcing him. He wants to do this. So Jesus, right now, I'm just going to pray real quick. And there's four ways to give. Um, I'll pray real quick and we'll say that. Jesus, we just right now submit to you in this way. We look at you as our husband, as the body of Christ. We look at you as the head of our finances. We look at you as the head of our decision making, our giving, all of it, Lord. Lord, help advise us. Help show us the steps we need to do. Lord, your kingdom secrets, reveal them to us through your word, Lord. As we seek deeper and deeper, Jesus, show us how to live a blessed life that you have for us. God, we just submit to you, and we love you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. There's four ways to give. Cash check, give lify, and pop doctrine. Thank you, Jesus. is about to do. Amen? Amen? Also, I'm not sure, do we still have any cookie grams left or two? There's two cookie grams left. If, if you're interested, they are, uh, they are to support RBY going to camp. Uh, two Valentine cookie grams left. Please see Ms. Roseanne or Pastor Gianna as soon as possible before they're gone. They're going to be gone. Amen? I, I, I'm telling you, church, this atmosphere, we, we, could just, we could just go home. But God has more, and the kids are like, oh, no, where's Levi? Church, why don't you help me welcome Levi to life? <laughs>
in you, church. There is no greater love than the love that God gives us. There is no better place to be than in his presence. We heard this time and time again, but it really doesn't matter where we are in our walk right now. I, I, I know that, that and for some of you, I, I truly believe exactly what everybody was saying. That unfortunately, we're not all where we need to be. We're all going through highs and lows. We've all had something taken from us. And I truly believe that the declaration we made this morning, whether you came to the altar or you were sitting at your chair, or you were standing in the back or wherever you were, whether you were watching us from around the world, I'm telling you, God gave us the authority to take it back. But here in the world, we always say that this is the month of love, right? And tomorrow we celebrate Valentine's Day. But no matter how much you celebrate and how much you show your love to a loved one, to your children, tomorrow, there is no greater love than the love that he has for you, no matter where we are in our walk with him.
got the TV going because I usually just have the TV in the background. And I'm sitting there. My nephew fell asleep. I've got like four lines on my iPad. And I said, Lord, I'm not winging this. I'm not going to show up to church with four lines. And as I just began to get into trying to put those four lines into thought and say, how do I make a sermon out of this? And he began just to, to give me comfort. Didn't even realize what time it was. My nephew got up and came and sat and started to watch a movie. My brother-in-law came and was like,
We got to get to a place no matter where you are, no matter how long you've been saved, no, no matter if, if you're on the mountaintop right now with the things of God or, or you're going through the valley, you got to realize that you just got to trust the process. See, some of us, we don't want to go through the process. Why, why am I going through the process? I've been good. I've been faithful. Why am I going through the process? Trust the process, church. Do you realize that sometimes we got ourselves in that situation? But you got to get to a place where you value change. I said you got to value change. So, so I ask you this morning, how much do you value change? And the reason that I say that is because sometimes we get all excited about the things of God. We begin to see him move in our lives. We begin to, to see a change. We get excited, but... But, but, but we hit a wall, we hit a mountain, we hit a circumstance, we face a giant, we're in the midst of a fire, and we can't see a way out. And even though we've been changed, we've been transformed, we've been set apart, we've been chosen for such a time as this, we feel empty, alone. We feel like that fire is going to burn us. We feel like we're going to die in the desert. We feel like that giant is just going to consume us. And that we'll never be able to reach that mountain top again. But I'm here this morning to remind you who you serve. I said I'm here this morning to remind you who you serve. Who you believe in. Who you have faith in. I mean, we all know Romans chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, right? Maybe we don't all know it, so let's read it. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Watch verse 2. conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind and you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Church, I'm here to remind you the Lord is with you. I said the Lord is with you. So, so th this morning I came in So I, I, I got into my word and the Lord took me to Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 where it says, I have not commanded you, but be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Isaiah 41 10, fear not for I am with you. Be not, be, be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteousness, my, with my righteous right hand. Deuteronomy 3, 6, 31, 6. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Some of these scriptures we're familiar with. We memorize them. We live by them. But remember that the Lord is with you. I want to take you to Zephaniah chapter 3. I'm going to read really quick verses 14 to 17. Zephaniah chapter 3. It says, Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart. O daughter of Jerusalem. Watch this. The Lord has taken away your judgments. The Lord has taken away our judgments. 
He has cast out your enemy. That enemy that stole everything from you. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall see disaster no more. I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. I took back what belonged to me. I took back what was promised to me. And I will not let any mountain and any desert valley situation to keep lying to me and taking away what was rightly promised to me. The Lord has taken away your judgment, cast away your enemy. The King of Israel, the Lord is in your midst. I'll say it again. You shall see disaster no more. See, church, this is where you got to dig in. Because it's easy for you to say, well, the word says trials and tribulations will come. They won't be a disaster unless you see it as a disaster. Trials and tribulation are a part of life, but they won't do anything to me if I believe and I understand that I am victorious. That, that, that I, I, Jesus already paid the price on the cross. He already went to hell, took back the keys. He's given me authority to go right to that lying devil and take back what is mine. And if we look at verse 16. It says, in that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, do not fear, Zion, let not your hands be weak. The Lord your God in your midst, the mighty one, will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Now I want you to embrace that because the Lord is with you. He is in the midst. He will save you. As I was going through that, I came across this that I just wanted to share. And it says, fear is one of Satan's most popular weapons that he uses against us. The most common lie that Satan uses to instill, instill fear into us is that God is far away or absent from our presence. See, we get to a place where, 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 where we don't feel God or, or we don't see things or, 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 or we're just, the blessings aren't just rolling and, and, and we're in a, in a valley. But as Pastor Chris, it's, it's as easy as going there and taking it back from you. See, we allow ourselves to fear him because he's taken what is most, maybe not valuable, but, but holds value in our hearts. Brother John, can you come here, please? I, I, I saw your shirt during worship, and, and, and the Lord just brought me here. You guys, to, to come up here with me. I, I want you to see my brother's shirt right here. It says no compromise. I want you to understand that we all go through things in life. That we all hit our highs and our lows. No matter where you are in your walk with God, sometimes without us realizing, it's easy to fall into this compromise. See, but just because we wear something 
doesn't mean that's what we're all about. And we have to go deeper than that. Because we still have times where it just doesn't go our way. See, it's, it's Super Bowl Sunday, and I said, where are your favorite jerseys? About four people wear a jersey. <laughs> Football's not that big a deal. That's fine. But guess what? My, this jersey I'm wearing, my team thought in the Super Bowl. But just because they didn't win doesn't make me not a winner. Just because sometimes we fall into the trap and compromise doesn't mean that we're not winners. But I want to remind you this morning that, you know, when you understand this and you say, I will not compromise, what's really important and what stirred me up this morning is when I read the back of the shirt. Some of you paid attention as he walked up. Some of you haven't. See, but that lying devil, he'll come to try to steal your joy. He'll come to try to tell you you're no good. He'll try to tell you you ain't ever going to get out of that. That you don't deserve this and you don't deserve that. And the calling that he's placed in your life is gone. My brother, I want to remind you what the Lord has said about you. See, it's not a coincidence that you wore this shirt and I called you up. I'm not sure if that was your first choice. Come on. But God wants to remind you uh-huh. and everyone here Hallelujah. that we all have a gift. Yes. Yes. And that what he has started, he will finish. And for those of you that might not be on the mountaintop. I just want to remind you this. The devil is a liar. Father God, I just thank you right now for my brother. I thank you. He can ama shara basi, no mo so shara basi. He can ama sa shara basi. For this mighty warrior that has fought the battle. Father God, I pray that you just ignite a superstorm. And Father, I thank you that Father God, there is no compromise in this body and this soul. Father God, that he understand that the devil is a liar, Father God. And this mighty warrior will be being, begin to tear down every every enemy.
that's symbolic because a lot of times we don't realize that without knowing we sit with the enemy. By no fault to us and nothing that we do and we didn't plan it. But the moment he stood up, he said, whoa, I accidentally sat where I wasn't supposed to. And I believe what you got is mine. So I'm going to take back what is mine. And I'm going to go back to my place. Because he has sent me there for such a time as this. And church, if we can all see it, we can believe it. See, I use John just as a visual illustration. Not that he's going through anything. Because guess what? We're all going through something. See, and we all need that same igniting that took place. Because some of us were all stirred up at the beginning of the year. And then maybe not so much. But I want to remind you that the Lord is with you. Now the illustration, I didn't plan it before service, but it, it's a perfect segue for where I'm going. Because sometimes we, we go through some things. Sometimes we, we just feel the pressures of life. Sometimes things aren't just going as great. Sometimes things are going perfect, but we're still not where we need to be. So the Lord last night took me somewhere that that's the, the main four lines that I had that I was trying to work with. And I was trying to understand, Lord, how do we get here? And I don't know how many of you are aware of a warrior called Gideon. How many have heard of Gideon? How many have heard of the powerful victory that Gideon had? The mighty warrior that he was. Mighty men and women of valor. 
Some of you might get stirred up. Some of you might grab it. Some of you might walk out of here, be changed, transformed, set apart. And to some of you, it's just okay. You said something. See, you got to get a point in your life where you can really believe that the devil is a liar. And everything he's spoken about you and, and every circumstance you've seen yourself in and every time you've fallen, you just get back up. See, Gideon saw himself weak. He said it himself. He saw himself weak as a lot of people see themselves at times. Gideon had doubt. The same as many do. We doubt our ability and we doubt we can be of much use to God. However, God sees us as he created us to be, not how we see ourselves. That's important this morning, church. No matter how you see yourself, understand that God sees you as he created you to be. Not what the circumstance says about you. Not what your family says about you. Not what your past says about you. But what God sees in you. everything on our own, we're going to fail, church. But when we see ourselves as God sees us, miracles can happen. Lives can be changed. First, we just meet. We need to make sure that the Lord is part of our lives, that we trust Him, that He has access to us just as we have access to Him then we must be willing to let him lead us. No matter how much we don't understand where we're going. See, sometimes we doubt that God is with us. Do you realize that God, that Gideon thought that the Lord had forgotten about That he had forgotten about his people, his family. Where's the promise? So we'll end with this. Judges chapter 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Gideon said to him, Oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? Sound familiar? Come on. Sound familiar? Yes. And where are all his miracles, which our fathers told us about, saying, did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? Where is he? Where are the miracle signs and wonders? Don't you see what I'm going through? This is lying devil. You don't belong here. Amen. Gideon said to him, Oh Lord, if the Lord is with us, why has this happened to us? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the bands of the Midianites. If you read that scripture, right? The people of Gideon had disobeyed God. They were sinning. And they were handed over to the Midianites. So right now he's questioning what's going on. You know, sometimes we give ourselves to things of the world, to our worry, to our fear. I'm not talking about sin. I'm talking about just normally giving ourselves to doubt, to fear, to insecurity. And they have dominion over our lives. That level, he, that devil, he's a liar. Verse 14. 
says, the Lord, then the Lord turned to him and said, go in this might of yours and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? Church, we got to realize who we are. The promise of God in our lives, he has sent us. We have the victory. <laughs> Verse 15 says, So he, he said to him, Oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, watch this. Indeed, my clan is the weakest, and I am the least of my father's house. Words have power. If my clan, my church, my family is the weakest and I am the least in my house, I'm not worthy. I don't know the word. I don't know this. I don't know that. I haven't. I, I, I.
that God gives us an opportunity to still get out of that situation, but we won't take it because we're going to fix this one day. I want to find my keys. You were in such a hurry. Why were you late? I couldn't find my keys. Why didn't you use the other ones? I needed to find mine. Now it's a little bit different when you only have one set of keys. You ain't going nowhere. Do you realize that God doesn't just give you one way out?
we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the miracle signs and wonders that took place this morning. We thank you for revelation. We thank you for open eyes. We thank you, Father God, that you are always with us. We give you all the honor and all the praise in the church of God said. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. You guys are dismissed. Remember, there are only two cookie grams left. Grab them. They're gone. Oh.